Well, two years ago, a mouse plague infested farms across large parts of rural Australia, destroying crops and damaging property. Farmers are now on alert again, with an increase in mice sightings from Queensland down to the Victorian border. Joining us live now is Richard Birdall, a farmer from Ningen and spokesperson from the New South Wales Farmers Association. Richard, really appreciate your time. Thank you. What do you think? Are we heading for another mouse plague? What's your expectation here? Uh, look, I know it's, it's probably a little, little early to, to predict a full plague, but what we're seeing and what we do see after a number of good years like we've had, we've had you know, almost three good seasons in a row, which is which is a lot. Um, we we see in those good seasons a lot of grain produced, a lot of, uh, even on grasslands, a lot of grass seed, and, that, and that's the recipe for a really good mouse plague. Um, and we're, we're seeing locally... Uh, a lot of mouse bait uh, being purchased by farmers, you know, right across the central west from the you know, Queensland border down. We're starting to see, yeah, a fair amount of increased numbers. Yeah, so is that really the only thing that farmers can do? Embark on a sort of baiting program to, to try and avoid the mice getting into their winter crops? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's definitely what farmers are, are, are doing already. We're starting to do perimeter baits, which is, you're putting some baits around the edges of crop paddocks just to just you know stop them going because what what you see is as summer ends and the summer grass dries out the seeds starts reducing there and they go looking for food and the first place they'll find it is just where we finish planting our winter crops wheat and canola and barley so it's it's like a giant mouse trap that we're setting out there um so it, yeah, perimeter perimeter baiting is the first thing we can do um, and hopefully we can control numbers that way. If things get really bad, then you have to start aerially baiting. And just as a, a, a measure, we just, just our own family spent 100,000 last mouse plague in, in baiting costs. Goodness. Okay, so something you're probably pretty keen to avoid again this year. A aside from the crop damage, what other damage do the mice cause? Do they actually get into you know the buildings and, and machinery and cause other sort of problems as well? Yeah, you would have seen the sort of dramatic pictures from the last mouse plague, which hopefully we won't see again this time. But yeah, that, they start in the fields and then they eat out fields and then they hit your infrastructure, sheds and silos, then into houses, they chew the wiring, they chew cars, um, lots of local towns. You know, I'm near the town of Ningen and you know, the, the, that's the first sort of place that gets hit is towns near you know, sort of cropping areas and everything gets eaten. I've seen them just eat paint off sheds and yeah. We're just we don't we're not there yet, um, but you know what we're wanting is sort of send the alert out for farmers as well, just to start being vigilant, putting bait, baiting cards out, and start reporting it. Start reporting it to your to to CSIRO and and to your um, local lands board. So, Rich, what was it like living amongst that a, a couple of years ago in the last plague? We were just w looking at some. Pretty intense pictures of um, mice everywhere, the kids out there sweeping them um, off what looked like a, a shed or something. I mean, it must be pretty it's, revolting um, having them around and the smell, I guess, when they die mustn't be very pleasant either. Yeah, no, it's not good. There's, there's no there's no way of describing the, the stench of, of mouse urine and dead mouse that inevitably occurs. Um, yeah, it's just, it really is just no fun at all and it's those times where you really think why do I farm like we we go from drought to flood and then into a mouse plague it just doesn't seem possible so fingers crossed you know that that we won't get there the, the difference this time is you know we've had a massive amount of frogs because it's been so wet so having a lot of frogs has meant we've got a lot of snakes um, and snakes are one of the greatest sort of natural predators of, of mouse one snake can take out the equivalent of a million mouse a year by stopping the breeding um, so, yeah, it's, hopefully we're not there yet. We don't want to get there. It's no fun at all. Um, and if we do start getting there, we really need some government assistance for, um, you know, to help, help us combat them. Gosh, Richard, I think we are all backing you here and really hoping that you don't have to go through that again because um, it doesn't sound like much fun for anyone involved. Hats off to all the farmers who have dealt with that in the past and are, are worrying about having to deal with it again. Really hope it doesn't get to that, but I really appreciate you bringing us up to date on, on what's happening at the moment. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having us.